first want to congratulate uh, Coach Summon and Lady Vols uh, for winning the championship. Uh, fun to watch them play. Uh, played hard. Our guys did a good job uh, closing out the regular season. Um, played some good basketball. I think, what, eight out of the last nine games. That's impressive in any league. Uh, to do it at the level our guys did it at, to come get back in games when we were down, uh, making shots, making plays. Guys that hadn't played a lot stepped up. Uh, so it's a credit to our guys for really staying focused uh, and finding ways to win games. Also, the guys did a great job uh, from start to finish of the season of getting better. And, uh, and as a coach, that's what you always want to see your guys continue to make progress every day individually as well as a team. Uh, on both ends of the floor, I thought we did that. Uh, I thought one of the, the biggest areas of improvement uh, was our free throw shooting. Uh, got stepped up, especially late, to make big free throws down the stretch of the season. Uh, and Trey, Trey was, you know, was obviously the best in the league at that. Uh, and it's tough, it's tough to be, tough to get beat when you can make them down the stretch and win games with that, the way we're defending. Last game, we did a good job of not turning the ball over, so that was great as well. Did some pretty good things in the league from a defensive standpoint with numbers and percentages uh, from where we started to where we finished in regular season play. Uh, but just a credit to the guys' hard work, their commitment to defending at a high level, uh, and more importantly, playing for each other. I thought that was great. Uh, Sometimes as you get better, you have to to go backwards, take a step backwards, to start taking those steps forward. When did you start seeing the team? Were they taking the steps forward before we saw the product on the court? Oh, I saw it. I saw it in, in you know in some of the early losses, uh, the four game home stretch we had uh, during the preseason uh, before we went to Memphis. Uh, but I saw the guys making progress. But it was, it was maybe one or two guys, and then another guy would step up in another game. Uh, one guy made progress defensively. The other guys might have not played as well. One guy made a pretty good move off the drill. We've been working three weeks on that. And he finally showed it in the game. And then I just think, I thought, you know, once the Florida game, guys, we got better as a team. Um, you know, from that point, guys individually got better, and we got better as a team, defending and trusting each other and believing in each other more than anything. Because now we make mistakes. And there's, there's still a lot of breakdown in games. We make mistakes, guys cover them up quickly on the next rotations defensively. Or a guy break down off the drill and makes a play. Somebody. Moving on the backside, whereas at the beginning of the season, we wouldn't rotate offensively to get the next play, but guys are doing that now. Your, the, you know, old cliche, guards dominate the march. It's time of year. Can you talk about your backward play, specifically Trey, in the last four or five games? Well, I mean, I, mean, I, I think, you know, I, I said it uh, when I really saw Trey in practice with his ability. He, got, he has a chance to be one of the best, if not the best, point guards in this league uh, with his ability and his skill package. That was a lot of work that he has to consistently do, as well as he's played right now. He's only a sophomore, you know, as a starter in his first season. I thought he played really well. Uh, got better late. Uh, when, he, when he's getting to the free throw line, he's tough to guard uh, because now his whole game opens up. He's getting to the rim. He's knocking down a three-point shot. He's penetrating and pitching. And then when he's not turning the ball over, I mean, it's just really tough to guard him at that point. And, uh, and, he, and he's really, really learning how to run a team more than anything. He's, he's a guy that he was able to take care of himself as far as his ability to score for so many years. Now he has to find a way to facilitate and run a team and be the leader out there on the floor. You feel good about your backboard not <coughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The guys, are, I think the biggest key uh, with other guys like Joe McCray is scoring the ball. We need him to stay aggressive and looking to score the ball, making strong moves to the rim. Also getting to the free throw line more because he's a better free throw shooter. Uh, he's missed a couple here and there, but he's a really good free throw shooter. So we need him to get to the line. But he's a guy that's built to score, so you need him aggressive. Uh, you know, Skyler's making shots. We need him to look for a shot a little bit more and being aggressive. Uh, but I think more than anything for our guards is to be able to take care of the basketball, to be able to facilitate on the perimeter, whether they dribble or penetrate. We need Josh to dribble or penetrate more because he has that ability to be aggressive, man. I think Cam is playing really well. Cam is doing a lot of things, shooting the ball, getting to the rim, rebounding the basketball, defending. He's doing a lot of things for us. Before the season, when the team was picked 11th, I know you guys talked about it, the players even said there's no way we'll be 11th. And I, I'm sure that was a motivational thing, but did you see this? I mean, it's honestly, 
I, I don't know what I really saw, to be honest with you, because you have a new team. And it's not like I coached this team for three years and I can come in and say, okay, this is what we're doing, guys. And, and if you picked us to finish 11th, and I knew the person, I knew the league, I knew who we were going up against. Well, I was trying to gauge the talent and the coaches as well, you know. So now you're talking about a new team, a new style, a new system. It's not an easy thing. So you, you kind of learn on the fly, so to speak, uh, understanding your personnel, where your strengths and weaknesses are. I always thought we could be a good defensive team. I didn't think we would be as bad as we were out the gates. I, I thought we could be good defensively early just because we can be solid. I didn't want to, you know, walk the ball up the court and hold the ball until we got good defense. I want to try to score the ball to not only be entertaining, but to give the guys confidence offensively. Uh, uh, so that way, when the defense did catch up, we would be ready. Uh, but I thought we'd be a little bit better defensively early in the season than what we were. Conza, you said a few weeks ago that, that Jordan L was about 75 percent of where he's at. Where is he at? Oh, I think he's still there. As good as he is, I think, because you have to understand it, he, he hadn't had a chance to really go through the grind of practice and uh, the system. Right now, what he's doing, this is everyday practice. That's what he's learning. Whatever we do in that practice that day, we don't have the time to go back and say, we, weren't, we did this four months ago. Let's work on this. I thought he had his best game defensively uh, against Vanderbilt. Did a tremendous job. We watched the film of playing post defense, challenging the shooters. When our guards were late, he did a good job of getting his hands up on the shoot. I thought he did a really good job with his whole floor game. Uh, but he's a guy, that he, he's a double double guy, on a, even on a bad night, you know. But right now, I, I, I don't think he's the play he's going to be. And that's just really him getting the feel for the system more than anything. Everything is still fast paced and moving. Once it really kind of slows down, he get a gauge of everything, <laughs> he'll be a special player. We've asked you, you know, about the, the NCAA tournament, how you guys are maybe getting considered as a different team with him. How has he changed your team since he came with Humboldt? Well, you know, I thought he was, uh, I, I thought we were playing pretty good ball because uh, he didn't play in the Florida game. I thought, he, but it's just another piece. Uh, I mean, Kentucky is good because they have multiple pieces that can play. Uh, when, you, when you're trying to be one of the best teams in America, you have to have multiple, North Carolina have multiple guys that can make plays. Uh, so he's really helped from that standpoint because you have to identify him on the floor. When our guards penetrate in the lane, it's hard to leave Jerron and John there because they can make plays and you have to box them out. And that's the, you have to double team them so now Jerron's open, but he, he opens up so many doors for you as well as Jerron. So it's just hard to say, okay, let's hone in this guy. We can beat him. Well, there's too many options now. Uh, good question. I mean, but they're a good team. Uh, I thought we had an opportunity to beat them here. They're, they're a good team. They play well together. Uh, they do a good job executing on both ends of the floor. They have a great shot blocker. Uh, but I, 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 mean, I think this league is it's, it's a good league. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I guess you can ask the same question with Syracuse are going, you know, 15 and one in, in the Big East. Uh, I think when you're good, you're good, and you have to give credit where it's due. Well, my perception on outside, you know, I always thought it was a league that just scored a lot. Uh, I don't think it get the credit for defending the way it does. I mean, you got a lot of teams that can defend in this league. Um, you got a lot of coaches that can coach in this league. Um, I mean, guys that understand they, they, they actually do a scouting report and they execute, you have to play. And I, I was asked the question, how does this league compare with the big team when I was playing? I mean, even as coach, I think they're very similar from the standpoint of you have to be ready, you have to game plan, you have to scheme it. And not, not no gimmicks, but you have to understand what's going on because these teams actually do their homework and they take away your strengths and you have to find a way to make plays. Early in the season when you talked about, you, know, you asked a couple times about Trey maybe moving a little bit off the ball occasionally, you, you always kind of shot it down quickly and said, no, he's a point guard, he has to be a point guard here. Was that because you knew what kind of player he could be at the point or was that because there was really no alternative? <laughs> For now, anyway. A little bit of both. I mean, just from the standpoint of the experience, I and mean, he had other guys there, but I just think with it, he had to be that guy, uh, and I think he can be that. Uh, and I was not about to let him off the hook and just let him play, play some two guard and shoot some balls and, and not do the things he needed to do in order for our team to be successful. So for me, I, I thought, you know, his future is a point guard in this program, and I, and I think he's going to be there. He's going to be a really good one at it uh, because he understands he's playing with a level of confidence right now, and he's only going to get better. But, but I thought he was. His best position for us is a point guard. Coach, would you, guys, would you 
say if Trey wants to have a, a pro career in the depth where he'll be as well, is that, that also part of your thinking is his height? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, not necessarily the height, but just just his game. He he has to be a point guard. Uh, you know, you you talking about you trying to be a pro, especially at the NBA level, where two guards are six five, six six, six eight, six nine. You're trying to defend him. That's not an easy thing to do. Uh, but I think for him being a point guard, which he can be that, because he can make play, he can make plays, he can dribble the ball, he can get to the rim, he can shoot the ball, he can do a lot of things. Uh, and he's just getting better and better every day. And then you said earlier that you, know, you thought this could be a good defensive team. Was it? Something you saw, or just, you just knew that you were going to insist they were going to be. A little bit of both. Uh, it, it had to be in order for us to be successful. But just, just, just seeing how the, the bodies, like Jerron Mamer's body, uh, Jordan McRae's length, Scotty McBee's toughness, uh, Cam's length. I mean, you, you can be a good defensive team. And I just, you know, with defenses, putting the time into it, but it's also, you know, having some uh, pride and some love for playing defense more than anything. Because you don't have to be the quickest guy to be a good defender. It's just Having some meaning and taking pride in doing what you do. Obviously, there are a lot of elements to coaching. Is this more? Is this one of the more fun years that you've had in watching a group of guys learn what they can do, and not only that, but then excel at it? Well, I think the thing that's fun for me uh, is when you see guys get better every day. When, when your guys look forward to practicing. Uh, so when you go to practice and you guys don't look forward to it, uh, there's no excitement in practice. It's going to be tough. And, I, and we generate energy in our practice. I, I, I can't be in a practice where there's no energy, no life, and guys aren't getting better. I mean, because why do you do this if your players don't get any better? But just to see our guys make progress every day. But also as a coach, when you see the other guys not making the level of progress you like for them to make, you continue to drive and push uh, to get it out of those guys. Uh, and that's the fun part about doing what we do. Uh, just making sure guys continue to get better. Uh, Jerron Maiman making big free throws late, having the confidence to do that. Uh, Trey Golden had, had, what, 17, 18 free throws in a row. Trey Golden making plays off the dribble. Cam Tatum not giving up. Uh, Jordan McRae becoming a scorer, and all of a sudden got a chance to be one of the better scorers in his league and continue doing what he's doing. So, so as a coach, that's, that's what drives you more than anything. During the SEC teleconference, I think you were asked about Rick Stansbury, and you talked about he understands the tournament environment. What's your understanding of the tournament? You, you played in conference tournaments, coach. You know, what are your thoughts about the tournament environment? environment well, I, th I think for me, you got to take uh, one game at a time, but you have to play every game like it's your last game. That's, that's very important. I, I don't think you're saving anything or holding anything back. You're trying to win every game. It's one game at a time. And as you go into a tournament environment, that's, that's my focus. There's no tomorrow. You, you're trying to win every game you play. Uh, you don't hold anything back. And you make it to the next day, you prepare to try to win that game the best way possible.